pom pom. Uh, just got a message from the Xian Zhou La Fu. Looks like it'll conflict with our original schedule. It's been a while, my friends on the Astral Express. How's your trailblazing expedition going? Soon, the Xianzhou Law Fu will be holding the Luminary War Dance. Those who have aided the Law Fu in overcoming the crisis are cherished allies of the Xianzhou. Thus, on behalf of the Seat of Divine Foresight, I'm extending an invitation to attend the ceremony. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. Well, things are getting lively. We've barely recovered from the family's Charmony Festival, and we're already being invited to another special event. Uh, yeah, me too. But, wait, won't it look unprofessional if we attend two ceremonies in a row? Aren't we supposed to be focused on restoring astral charts and doing some serious scientific exploration? So we should leave March behind to take care of the Express? Uh, hey, that's not what I meant. I'm all for some fun. I just hope there won't be any surprise party crashers like Friday or Saturday. The Sienjo Lafu has recently overcome a crisis by holding the war dance there, demonstrating to everyone that they've returned to a state of peace and safety. But that's what everyone said before we went to Pemiconi. You'll be totally safe under the family's protection. No need to worry. The war dance is not like the Charmony Festival with all its hidden secrets. It's just a festival to honor the Rainbow Arbiter and the Cloud Knights, who fought against the abominations of abundance and protected the Xianzhou ships. Aside from Star Skiff performances, it's mostly martial contests. Nothing too different from the Taikian Roboball contest we've seen before. What do you think, Himiko? Since we've accepted Miss Black Swan's proposal, we should probably head to Amphorius for refueling. Certainly no rush. This trailblazing expedition is quite unique, and the Express needs to be fully stocked and prepared before moving on to the next stop. With Madame Herta's help, I was planning to deliver some Leviathan fossils from Kalinga Abyss to Ron May, member 81 of the Genius Society. It could earn us some favors before we set off. However... For it may take a few weeks. Ah, so that means we're not going to the Lafu. Being an adult means maintaining relationships, whether we like it or not, March. Since we've been invited, it's only right for the Astral Express to attend the ceremony. So here's the plan. Pom Pom will take everyone to the Sienjo Lafu. Mr. Yang and I will meet up with Ron May and fulfill our promise. Meanwhile, you, March, and Don Hung will represent the Express and attend the war dance. What do you two think? Well, Himeko and Mr. Yang will be busy with serious research. Besides, fossils can't compete with martial contests when it comes to fun, right? Plus, you're the only one with so many friends on the Law Fu. I'll be lost if you don't come along. You've got to lead the way. Now that everyone's on board with the plan, it's time to warp to the Xianzhou Law Fu. Kalinga Abyss? What does she expect to find there? Current research on the Leviathan merely proves how little we know about such life forms. That's why geniuses are interested in that field. Science is all about uncovering the unknown.
Don't miss us too much. <laughs> if I stumble upon some cool Leviathan fossils, I'll bring a few back as souvenirs for you. Kalinga Abyss. That's why geniuses are interested. Don't miss us too much. Himeko really knows how to convince people. <laughs> Between Leviathan fossils and the war dance, the latter definitely sounds more fun. Uh, by the way, Don Hung, this time you'll be taking a stroll with us on the Lafu, right? <laughs> and just let you two wander around aimlessly on the Lo Fu by yourselves? <laughs> I don't think so. Plus, Mr. Yang is right. The Ambrosial Arbor Crisis just ended, and both the long life and short life species are still feeling uneasy. And that's why Jing Yuan wants to organize the war dance to show that the Xianzhou Lo Fu is stable and safe. And uh, since he has extended an invitation, it's only right that I visit my old friend. Uh, coming back to this place brings back so many memories, you know? Uh, hey, I'm not actually going to recite a poem. I was just thinking about all the twists and turns we went through when we first arrived on the Sienjo. This time, we're not being forced or enticed or chasing after wanted criminals. And we didn't have to sneak in through the cargo dock. This trip has been incredibly smooth. Quite unusual, I must say. Such is the fate of us nameless, I suppose. Ching said General Jing Yuan sent him to welcome us. But where is he? Let's wait for him in front of the loom. It's the most prominent landmark on the dock. Hey, you guys! Hold on a moment! Uh, did they just call us? Uh, look at their outfits. They're from Penacony, right? Are you familiar with the Sienjo Lafu? <laughs> we know a little bit about it. What do you need? We are from Penacony. Maybe you've heard of it. We came to this ship to gather interesting materials for making dream bubbles. Oh, we just left there. Oh, talk about coincidence. That's great. Do you know any must-see attractions on the Lofu? Tourists around at the moment are here to attend the war dance, and that's why we're here too. Yeah, we know about that ceremony, but isn't the fighting ring still closed? I've heard the ring was actually converted from a huge decommissioned Lafu fighter jet. No doubt about it. It's a massive fighter jet. It's got to be larger than a civilian star skiff. But for now, all we can do is wait until the war dance starts in a few weeks, before we can board it. We've still got work to do, so we can't just sit around waiting for it to start. That's why we're asking you about some must-see attractions. We're looking for unique experiences that you won't find on Penacony. Our clients love these kinds of dream bubbles the most. Uh, you're the expert here. <laughs> Give them some suggestions. Oh, that's a terrible idea! You'll get them arrested! 
<laughs> You're joking, right? How about giving us some more practical suggestions? Wait a sec. Maybe it's not such a terrible idea after all. <laughs> no risk, no reward. Come on, let's go climb that tree. Slow down a bit. Wait for me. Uh, hey, wait! Just think about what you're doing! Oh, and don't mention our names if something goes wrong! Oh, I hope they don't get into trouble. This is nerve-wracking. Uh, look, Yan Ching's here. Oh, really? Let's go catch up with him! This way! Hey, everyone! It's been a while! Well, it doesn't feel like it's been that long since we last saw you! But, Yen Ching, are you...? What's up, Miss March? Well, they say kids grow up really fast. Uh, Yen Ching, are you a little bit taller than before? <sighs> We've only been away for a few months. Huh? Uh, what are you doing? Sorry, but after our previous adventures, I've become suspicious of whoever greets us first. Ugh, do you have to be suspicious around me, too? You know, the last time we came to the Sienjo, the first person who greeted us was... Uh, I get it. Better safe than sorry. Seriously? I've never seen the La Fu so lively before. I was a bit worried that holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis might be too soon, but seeing the bustling Starskiff Haven, I understand why General Jing Yuan chose this timing. Yep. There's people from other delves and travelers like you three who've come from afar. With the war dance coming up, there's a huge number of visitors pouring into the Starskiff Haven. The Cloud Knights are working hard to keep the security tight. The General said this ceremony would help the Sienjo Lafu recover from the crisis. It's a way to showcase our martial spirit, reassure people, boost morale, and attract visitors from other planets to promote trade and peace. By the way, the Sienjo Alliance places great importance on this ceremony too. The Sienjo ships, the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing, have both sent messengers to offer their blessings. Yeah, the Xianzhou Yao Qing is a major force in hunting down abominations and is always engaged in conflicts across the cosmos. Although it's a member of the Xianzhou Alliance, I don't know much about it. But Madame Yu Kung from the Skyfaring Commission mentioned that the Yao Qing always sends back reports of great victories, which is quite impressive. I heard General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is a young and dauntless lady. Hmm. My peers say that she's like a goddess of war, capable of crushing dozens of abominations with a single punch. Huh. I wonder if it's true. <laughs> if only I could witness her prowess with my own eyes. By the way, Yan Qing, where are we headed next? Uh, I'm sorry for talking your ear off. The General wants to catch up with you at the Palace of Astrum. He's been eager to hear about how the Express has been doing. <laughs> it's funny how he tries to act all mature, but whenever it comes to something he's interested in, you can really see his childish side. <laughs> I agree. All units, assemble quickly! Get ready to protect the crowd! Uh, I just mentioned security, and now all of a sudden something's gone wrong. 
Excuse me. I need to go check out the situation. Hey! What's that supposed to mean? Um, we'll go with you. I'll deal with him. Borison? Why are there Boris in here? This ends now. Let's improvise. You. <laughs> you could have surrendered. Step up, let's see ya. <laughs> no, don't. Dreams do come true. <laughs> The mood is set. Let the show begin! Everything is ordained by the- Oh, stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing! You admit this crime? In the mood for another be- <laughs> For the help? Uh, uh, sorry, no time to chat. Uh, could you give me back my? <sighs> Wait, my sword. <sighs> Let's just get down to business first. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we'll have to put our plans on hold for now. I need to find out what's going on. While we appreciate your rescue, my Sienjo friends, don't you think it's a bit too much to detain us and our cargo? Sorry, but we've been ordered to detain you and your cargo for inspection until we figure out the source of the attack. Once we're done with the formalities, we'll let you and your cargo go. Ow, but this shipment isn't even meant for the Lafu. And it's IPC's patented technology. Who do you think you are to conduct an inspection? According to the protocol, all cargo arriving on the Lafu must go through inspection. Oh, but we didn't officially enter your dock at all. We just sought refuge in your dock because we were attacked by the Borisids. Looks like this argument could go on forever. Let's not get involved in a heated dispute that won't lead to a resolution. Well, how dare you detain our ship? Who do you think you are? Who's in charge here? I need some answers. It's my fault. We let our guard down for a moment. I take full responsibility. With the war dance approaching, safety should be a top priority. Now, tell me, how did Boris and prisoners end up in Starskiff Haven? According to the protocol, 
Morrison prisoners should be held on a star skiff and taken directly to the Shackling prison under strict supervision without ever touching the ground. Who allowed a prisoner transport ship to dock at the passenger terminal? Please don't blame this, Captain. This incident involves the Chu Ming's diplomatic vessel. Who are you? I'm Lu Ju, an officer of the Patrol Defense Squad. Thank you for your help, Lieutenant Yen Ching. The situation unfolded rapidly, and it shouldn't be held against the captain. Here's what happened. An IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison just before arriving, and the Ju Ming's diplomatic vessel came to the rescue. They fought off the Borison pirates and imprisoned them on their ship. So, an IPC ship was attacked by the Borison near the Lafu, and the Ju Ming envoy saved them? Uh, this sounds complicated. Honestly, it gives me a headache, too. The Ju Ming diplomatic ship, adhering to standard procedure, docked at the passenger terminal to hand these criminals over to the Lafu. You know, with all the outsiders flooding onto the Lafu, the Star Skiff lanes are under immense pressure. The Borison Desperados decided to put up a fight before the prisoner transport Star Skiff could get there. And that's what you just witnessed. We'll make sure these prisoners are sent to the Shackling Prison as soon as possible. I see. It's an unusual situation indeed. I'll report it to the Security Department of the Realm Keeping Commission and ask for their cooperation in handling the aftermath. Maybe I should gather more details from others, so that the Seed of Divine Foresight can have a better understanding of the situation. Oh, you look much mature now, Yenxing! Please don't tease me, Miss March. The situation on the Sienjo before the war dance is like a calm lake that can be disturbed by even the smallest pebble, capable of generating far-reaching ripples with even the slightest disturbance. What are those people... I mean, those monsters we just dealt with? Yeah. Those werewolf monsters are known as Borison. They are abominations of abundance, and we've been fighting them for a very long time. The Borison have been a powerful force for a long time, plundering and enslaving many worlds. The threat they pose is just as terrible as the Swarm Disaster, and the Alliance even had a fierce war with them three decades ago. Their presence has faded over the years, but who would have thought? According to that officer, they attacked an IPC ship near the Senjo Lofu. Such a brazen attack seems quite unusual to me. Yeah, that's what I find strange too. It seems like the IPC and the Borison have some serious grudges. Well, enough with the chit chat. The General wants me to take you to the Palace of Astrum. I'd love to chit-chat a little longer, but there are some things that can't be left unchecked. Hmm? Is it a serious matter? Maybe you'll need our help in hunting down the Borison? Thank you, but it's no big deal. By the way, that young lady who just appeared, she took my sword. I'm thinking of filing a lost property report at the Realm Keeping Commission to see if I can get it back. She did it on purpose. <sighs> Don't remind me. I just zoned out for a moment, that's all. All right, let's not keep the general waiting. Don't worry. There aren't many people out there with that kind of talent. It shouldn't be too hard to find her. There are a lot of troublemakers around. Success in the 
It's been a long journey, Elder Wyatt. Thank you for your presence. <laughs> Don't mention it. Thank you for taking the time to welcome me. General, I brought our guests from the Express. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for my bad timing. I didn't know you were meeting a guest, General. Don't worry, you're just in time. <laughs> it's been a while, my friends from the Astral Express. Oh. <laughs> well, it's an honor to be in your dreams, my friend. Allow me to introduce you to General Hua Yin. He's the Arbiter General of the Xianzhou Zhu Ming, known as the Flaming Heart. <laughs> no need to be so formal. I'm just a tourist here, no different from other tourists who've come to attend the ceremony. Elder Hua Yin is not only one of the Arbiter Generals, but also the Furnace Master of the Artisanship Commission. Besides his martial skills, he excels in forging various weapons. Such talents are unique, even among the Arbiter Generals. Be it Arbiter General or Furnace Master, these are merely titles given to me long ago. I've retired several times already, but with the current change in circumstances, the Marshal has called me back to duty, and I had no choice but to answer the call. Well, in the end, I'm to blame. Living such a long life naturally brings its share of disapproval. It's, it's an, an honor, honor to, to meet, meet you, you, General Huayan. It's my honor to meet you, General Huayan. No need to be all formal. Today I'm just a guest on the Lawful, the same as all of you. So, these three are the ones you mentioned, Jing Yuin? The heroes who helped you with the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Indeed. There's Don Hong, March 7th, and her. Without their help, I'm afraid the Lawful might not have easily overcome this crisis. So, the Imbibator Lune's reincarnation has returned to the Lawfu and will attend the war dance. I'd love to have a drink with you, should the chance present itself. You're more than welcome, General Huayan. And this young friend is... Yan Ching, my apprentice. He remains by my side as my retainer due to his youth, which I hope will season him with experience. He will stand for the Law Fu's Cloud Knights in the upcoming war dance, ready to take on all kinds of challenges. Great, great! It's a real treat to see so many talented young people around here today. Oh, I almost forgot. This is my apprentice, Yun Li. Uh, it's, it's you! Oh, it's you. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you two already know each other? Guess we don't need any introductions, then. What a coincidence! I was afraid I'd have trouble finding this girl. Oh? Now you've piqued my curiosity. Tell me, how did you two become acquainted? She helped me capture the escaped Borison prisoners at the Starskiff Haven. Allow me to express my gratitude for you. But when you left, you took my flying sword with you. Your flying sword? 
<laughs> oh, so that's why I found a dagger in my bag. Turns out it's yours. Yes, it is. Now that we've met again, I hope... <laughs> nope, that won't do. Won't do? <sighs> you want your sword back, right? Well, you can't just take it back. On the Jooming, when you lose your sword on the battlefield, you have to reclaim it on the battlefield. <laughs> As for this little sword, it was supposed to strike that escaped Borison prisoner. But unfortunately, its owner's agitated state caused it to fly off like a kite with a broken string, and it missed its target. By the way, if I hadn't caught it and helped it hit its mark, that Borison prisoner would have gotten away. Hold on a second, Lee. You took my sword without even asking, and now you're refusing to give it back? <laughs> so much for Lafu Swordmasters. What did you just say? If you just stepped up and took your sword back from me fair and square, <laughs> I would have totally respected you. But nope, you tried to play it down, expecting me to just hand it back to you like it's nothing. In front of everyone! With all due respect, you don't honor your sword, so you don't deserve it. Hasn't anyone told you that taking without asking is stealing? If you want to settle this with swords, fine. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one duel right now. Yang Ching. <laughs> Well, that's more like it. Just be careful. Because I'm not as easy to handle as the Borison. <sighs> you too. Be quiet and apologize to Yen Ching. <laughs> hey! Whose side are you on, Grandpa? I... um... I don't take sides. It's a small misunderstanding. And an apology would be too much. I've heard about the Zhu Ming's incredible swordplay and craftsmanship. Most notably, the legendary Flame Wheel Octet. Seeing Miss Yun Li, who is among those ranks today, well, I must say, she definitely has that fiery edge. <laughs> Such grandiose names. Some folks love to spin these fancy titles, trying to set the Cloud Knights apart. Yun Li is still just a young girl, a bit awkward and hot-tempered. So please forgive her if she's being rude. Well, everyone, Elder Hua Yen and I have some business to discuss. For now, Yang Ching, why don't you entertain our guests and take Miss Yun Li to the inn? I'll find another chance to talk with you all. I'd like to express my gratitude to the Astral Express for helping the law food during the crisis. That's so kind of you. I mean, you've already thanked us so many times. Please forgive me for coming at an inconvenient time. You needn't apologize, General Huayan. All right, Yun Li. Take this opportunity to clear things up with Yen Ching. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's better to make friends than enemies. But I won't be heading to the inn just yet. I want to visit Lingsha. She just arrived in the Lafu and could use some help settling in. Yang Ching, once you've helped our guests get settled, go to the Artisanship Commission for me. I've heard about the attack and the detainment of the IPC ship. Qingzu sent word that the IPC members are protesting and wish to have their cargo back. See if you can calm them down. Don't get aggressive. Just make it clear that the Cienjo Law Fu has no intention of violating their rights. I'm on it. <sighs> this trip is totally worth it. Compared to the Juming, the Law Fu is so much livelier. But. It's a shame the Lafu Swordmasters don't seem that great. Glad to meet you too. Are you here to participate in the war dance? Hmm. 
So, you're not a participant? You look like you know your way around the fight. Well, you can still sign up. The Cloud Knight's ring is always open to outsiders. Ah, that's how outsiders refer to my peers in the Juming Cloud Knights and the Artisanship Commission. We all train under Grandpa's guidance, learning the art of craftsmanship and swordplay. That's how we got that title, I guess. Uh, just don't mention it in front of Grandpa. He always says that empty titles bring pointless challenges and conflicts. We Jooming Swordmasters pride ourselves on the success of the group over the individual. <sighs> I have some things to do. Besides, little Yun Ching doesn't seem too happy about me tagging along. it with my skills. So, I guess you can say I'm a robber or something. How dare he imply I'm a thief? Totally different. Besides, the sword seems scared of its own master. I'd like to ask him, you claim to cherish your sword as your life, yet you don't even recognize the state it's in right now? I didn't intend to keep his sword. I was planning to take this chance to return it to him. But now... I've changed my mind. I'll give that poor flying sword some proper maintenance. I won't consider returning the sword unless he learns how to say please, hello, thank you, and sorry. So he can forget about it for now. I'm sorry for Yang Ching's rudeness. Not at all. Taunted by Yun Li like that, even a training dummy would be angry. You've taught your apprentice well. If it were me in my younger days, I'm afraid I'd have drawn my sword and fought. Yan Ching can understand your concerns. On the other hand, Yun Li is still a naive girl who's only interested in swordplay. Honestly, I brought her here to participate in the war dance because I want to broaden her horizons. Scraggy, as if even a light breeze would knock him over. Is that old man really an arbiter general? Well, each Xianzhou ship has its own division and specialty within the Alliance. Not all of the arbiter generals are good at leading the charge. You heard what Jing Yuan said, right? General Hua Yan was once the head of all the skilled craftsmen on the Zhu Ming. Madam Herta. Hmm, that would make sense. Anyway, it's really weird for a Sienjo native to look so old. Hmm, good question. He's right there. So why don't you ask him yourself? Nah, I'd like to live a little longer. <laughs> we should leave. General Jing Yuan asked Yan Qing to entertain us, so obviously. He has important matters to discuss. Let's not waste any time here.
This is the report Ching Zhu just sent me. Let me take a look. Hmm. Huh. Looks like the General has given me a tough challenge. He wants me to try and help put the IPC's mind at ease. Well, it's not exactly a test. As Cloud Knight officers, we not only learn the art of war and martial arts, but also occasionally have to handle diplomatic disputes. It's just, you know, talking things out isn't as straightforward as duking it out with weapons on the battlefield. This is especially true when you're up against the IPC, with their non-stop corporate babble. <sighs> well, let's not worry about that for now. Shall I take you to the inn? <sighs> well, let's not worry about that for now. It is the Law Fu's honor to have you in attendance at the war dance. Yet, the fact that a simple martial arts ceremony has attracted Esteemed generals from the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing implies intentions beyond mere spectating. Might there be any specific instructions from the Marshal? You're overthinking it, Jin Yuen. As I said, I'm here to broaden my granddaughter's horizons. I have no ulterior motives. However, I have no clue what the Yao Qing Arbiter General has in mind. Do you remember when you accepted this position? I told you that an Arbiter General's battlefield goes beyond the physical one. You'll need to lead and manage everything on the Xianzhou. The title of Arbiter General holds a weight far greater than its literal meaning. So many years have passed, and you've done well. However, longevity for the Sienjo people can be a curse. Living too long means that every mistake you made will lurk in the shadows. And one day, they'll eventually catch up to you. The Marshal knows everything that has happened on the Lawful. As for the Merlin's Claw of the Yao Qing, she has come specifically for you. Speaking of which, why hasn't she arrived yet? They say the Merlin's Claw strikes like lightning. Being late isn't her style. That's not true, General Hua Yan. She's been here a while, but I'm sure you've heard of her unbridled nature. As soon as she disembarked from the Star Skiff, she mentioned having something to attend to, and simply disappeared. You must be the messengers from the Xianzhou Yao Qing, I assume. We are Jiao Chou and Moza, retainers of the Merlin's Claw. It's an honor to meet you in person, Arbiter Generals. Hmm. Now this is interesting. A guest who doesn't come to visit but sends a message instead. Hmm. What does she mean? Tell me, what could be more important to her than coming here? Master heard about a spectacular view in Scale Gorge Waterscape. I believe she went there to enjoy it. A spectacular view? <laughs> Did you hear that, Jing Yuen? This person is being sarcastic. Please do not misunderstand me, General Hua Yan. I was simply stating the truth. Master thought it would be inappropriate to keep you waiting, so she sent us here. Once she's finished with admiring the scenery, she'll personally come and apologize to the both of you. you and Lee to return my sword.
Unacceptable. Every sword is precious to me. If it weren't for the General's interference, I would have taught that shameless girl a lesson in swordplay. Uh, by the way, I don't know if it's just me, but the General seemed a little... Um, reserved? Could it be because of Elder Wyan's visit? Reserved? Really? Uh, maybe I'm just overthinking things. No, you're not. When I entered the Palace of Astrum, I realized that the messenger from the Xianzhou Zhu Ming was actually the Arbiter General himself. So, the messenger from the Xianzhou Yao Qing must be the Merlin's Claw herself, I presume. That's right. Well, that's what makes this entire thing so unusual. What's so unusual about it? They simply received an invitation from Jing Yuan. Just like the crew, right? <sighs> the war dance is just a small festival. And now we have two Arbiter Generals from other Xianzhou ships here. <sighs> I'm afraid they're here for something more. <sighs> Maybe they've come to hold Jing Yuan accountable for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Hold him accountable? Uh, come on! Didn't the Law Fu fall victim to the disciples of Sanctus Medicus and the Antimatter Legion? Why would they blame the victim? Don Shu's rebellion and Fentilia's scheming are merely one side of the story to the other Arbiter Generals of the Alliance. Only a single piece of incontrovertible evidence remains, creating an endless source of potential complications. The Ambrosial Arbor. Yes. It's undeniable that the plague mark, which was subdued by the Xianzhou Lo Fu, has resurfaced. But was it really a conspiracy instigated by the Antimatter Legion? Or does it indicate a traitorous intent from within the Lo Fu, implicating Jing Yuan himself? Once the spark of suspicion is kindled, it proves hard to extinguish. The General must have had that in mind when he invited us to attend the war dance. Ah, uh, what was I thinking? Seriously, here I was looking forward to a carefree and enjoyable trip. But it seems wherever we go, drama is just around the corner. Ah, oh, I was so excited. I thought those Arbiter Generals were just here to see the ceremony. By the way, I heard that an alchemist from the Juming diplomatic ship has arrived, and rumors say that she's to be the new cauldron master of the Alchemy Commission on the Lafu. Hmm, an alchemist from the Juming serving as the cauldron master on the Lofu? While it's not unheard of, the timing itself. Thanks to your words, Mr. Don Hung, now I finally see the underlying tensions. The General is under tremendous pressure right now, but I was completely oblivious to his troubles. Uh, how naive of me. Uh, come on, don't think like that. Leave the adult matters to the adults. Even if you wanted to do something for the General, it's not like you can do anything. <sighs> uh, did I say something wrong? Again? Miss March is right. I don't have the skills to share the General's burdens at the moment. Still, I'll do my best to follow his instructions. Let's go. Once I've taken you to your accommodations, I need to go to the Artisanship Commission to handle the IPC's protest. Uh, he looks like he has a lot on his mind. We can't just let him go alone. Uh, why don't we accompany you to the Artisanship Commission? Uh, this is too much trouble. While I appreciate your kindness, dealing with the IPC's workers could be tricky. I'm afraid this will cause trouble for the Express. Uh, no worries! We're pretty experienced in dealing with the IPC. 
You've heard of the Ten Stone Hearts? We've dealt with quite a few of them, right? What's with you turning into a scaredy cat? I didn't see you worrying about lawsuits when you wrecked that giant mech. Well, since you're willing to help, I won't decline your kindness. Let's head to the Artisanship Commission and meet them. with you CM Joe people? I think I get it now. In your words, this is called looting a burning house, right? But I am trying to reason with you here. That toxic voice sounds familiar. Haven't I heard it before in Arum Alley? You know what? This isn't my first time dealing with the Skyfaring Commission. I can handle your unreasonable ways. But straight up snatching IPC cargo? Isn't that going a bit too far? <sighs> Just as I've said it many times already, once we've inspected the cargo and completed the security check, you can be on your way. Is there something wrong with your ears, or is it just your brain? I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm thinking clear. And my answer is crystal clear. Not a chance. Keep detaining my cargo and I'll file a complaint directly with your general. You jerk. Who are you calling a dog? Wait. Why are you here? You're staying on the Sienjo, are you? What terrible luck! Wherever you go, disasters aren't far behind! Aren't you the guest from the Astral Express? What brings you and Yan Ching to the Artisanship Commission? Trouble caused by the IPC? I'd say it's caused by the Skyfaring Commission! Looks like you've met this IPC worker before. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. I was sent here to deal with the IPC protest, Mishikwe. What's going on here? <sighs> As you know, this IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison and rescued by the Juming's diplomatic ship. Then the Cloud Knights were instructed to bring it back to the dock for repairs and inspections. And this is Mr. Scott, the person in charge of this transport ship. So you're Scott. I've heard her mention you. Weren't you kicked off the Lafu before? Why did you come back? Like I wanted to come back. I thought I'd just dock at the harbor for repairs and leave this forsaken place for good. Little did I know, as soon as the ship entered the harbor, a bunch of Cloud Knights showed up and snatched all our cargo from the hold. What do you mean by snatched? I've told you a million times. It's a security check. Then why did you bring the cargo to the Artisanship Commission? You even brought in some shady craftsmen. It's obvious you're trying to steal the IPC's patented technology! Listen here. Firstly, the Skyfaring Commission detected dangerous items that could possibly be weapons in your cargo hold. That's why they called me here, to double check. Secondly, where the heck did you get the idea that I'm a shady craftsman? Even if there are dangerous items, what do they have to do with you? It's not even being shipped to the Law Fu. We'll just fix the ship and be on our way. We won't unload our cargo here. But you'll have to stay in the port for several days before your ship is repaired and you can take off again. How can we just leave unchecked items sitting here? I understand, but we don't need to disassemble the cargo if it's just a security check, right? In most cases, we don't. However, our scans discovered that the cargo doesn't only contain machinery, but also some... substance that resembles biological tissue. Bio 
biological tissue. Does this crate contain living things? I'm afraid we'll need to wait for the Alchemy Commission for further confirmation. In any case, according to our regulations, we need to unseal one of the crates for further examination. But this IPC specialist has been hindering us on the grounds of patent secrecy. The Alliance's regulations on biological products are very strict. Without further inspection, there is no way for the Skyfaring Commission to release the cargo. Oh, really? Fine! If anyone lays a finger on that shipment, they'll have me to deal with! It doesn't matter if it's mechanical or biological! It's none of your business! I'm filing a complaint against the Skyfaring Commission's ridiculous regulations! <sighs> this Mr. Scott seems stubborn and difficult to persuade. Honestly, I really don't want to have a vicious confrontation with the IPC. I heard how you helped Aramali. The IPC representative back then was Mr. Scott, right? Since you've dealt with him before, it looks like I'll have to rely on you again. What are you guys whispering about over there? Just hurry up and give us back our cargo! As I recall, this guy won't listen to reason and can only be persuaded with intimidation. But he does seem to follow rules to some extent. Let's use the- Speaking of regulations, we have our own laws and regulations too. According to Article 4 of the Cienjo Alliance IPC Trade Consensus, the Alliance and IPC shall never infringe on each other's intellectual property rights. can sign a non-disclosure agreement with you. That way, you won't have to worry about any infringements, right? We can sign a mutually acceptable non-disclosure agreement in accordance with the IPC's... Well, uh, that makes sense, but how can we trust you to honor the terms? <clears throat> Even if we set aside the secrecy of intellectual property, these prototypes built by the Intelligentsia Guild are incredibly valuable, beyond your wildest imagination. If anything goes wrong, you won't be able to pay for it even with your lives. Give us an exact amount, Mr. Scott. If there's any damage after the inspection, the Express... Uh, um, I mean, the Skyfaring Commission will compensate you. The Skyfaring Commission... Yeah, they will compensate you. Provided a detailed report of the damage is submitted. I don't doubt the financial strength of the Skyfaring Commission. However, this is not just about money! Besides, the cargo on this transport vessel belongs to the Intelligentsia Guild. If you want to inspect the cargo, shouldn't you at least call in a member of the Intelligentsia Guild to be present? Pretty tight with Dr. Ratio from the Intelligentsia Guild. Almost like family. Doesn't that make me practically a member of the Intelligentsia Guild too? What's all this nonsense? Even if you were married to him, you still couldn't represent the Intelligentsia Guild. We both need to follow the regulations, because that's how the IPC and the CNJO operate, right? As an IPC worker, I have to abide by its regulations. If I make an exception and allow you to inspect the cargo, it'll spell disaster for me!
understand that you're trying to stick to the IPC regulations, and that's commendable, Mr. Scott. But what you fail to see is that this argument is tarnishing the IPC's reputation on the Sienjo. If this conflict with the Skyfaring Commission escalates, it won't just make things difficult for your business, but it'll also have an impact on your career down the line. Of course, I, I never wanted conflict with the Sienjo. Like I said, all I wanted was to retrieve the cargo and be done with it, but they just refused to let us go. Well, you guys sure know how to argue your case. Fine, I'll allow you to do the security inspection. It's just that uh, I need some time to sort things out. This is a big deal. Let me talk to headquarters first. So, Mr. Scott, are you just stalling for time and planning to leave the CN Joe as soon as your ship is repaired to avoid the Skyfaring Commission's inspection? Well, IPC staff are free to come and go, as long as they don't break any laws. Yeah, you've got some insight there. Who are you again? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lingsha, Cauldron Master and Head of the Alchemy Commission on the Law Fu. Could she be? Yeah, she's the new Cauldron Master assigned here from the Sienjo Juming. I received a report from the Artisanship Commission about cargo containing samples of unknown organisms. It said they needed help from the Alchemy Commission. I had nothing better to do, so I came myself. It's fine, Mr. Scott. If you really don't want your cargo to be inspected, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it doesn't matter? How can you say that? Why are you being so nice all of a sudden? Hmm? Well, since you're not going to check it, I'll take this crate and be on my way. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, sure. Why should I object? Not only this sample, but all the goods on the transport ship are yours to keep. Like I said, we won't inspect them. Wait a minute! Well, that's more like it. If only the young displayed a more reasonable attitude, we could have sidestepped that altercation just now. Our ship will leave in a few days once the engines are repaired. Your ship can leave whenever you want, but I'm afraid I can't say the same for your cargo. According to the import and export regulation signed between the Sienjo and IPC, all biological shipments can only leave the port when they have confirmed to be of no threat or when all biological activity expires. Since we can't determine if your shipment is safe for the environment, I guess we'll have to wait for its biological activity to expire. Let me check the previous cases. Normally, it'll only take around 47 star calendar years. <laughs> only 47 years? Why so surprised? You're still young and full of energy. I'm pretty sure you'll live a few more decades. Have some confidence in yourself. Ha! Typical of a long life species. Your words are dripping with sarcasm. While you may not care about time, I do. I'll be demanding double compensation from the Skyfaring Commission for every minute wasted. Sure thing, Mr. Scott. You seem pretty confident that your career and life will last long enough to witness this victory unfold. Uh, step aside, guys. Let them do the inspection. Uh, but, Mr. Scott... Come on, we're already in enough trouble. Just let them do the security inspection. And if needed, I can always grovel before the Intelligentsia Guild later. I'm just using my head for what it's apparently good for, right?
Well, honestly, at least you're not as annoying as that woman. Bro, just do the inspection. This lady is really something else. Is this the IPC product? Uh, uh, listen up! Any damages caused by inspections will be filed with the IPC! Turn it off! For another beating, and it opens. Stay in step. Dreams do come true. No manners, huh? huh? Do you admit this crime? Step up, let's see it. <laughs> the mood is set. Let the show begin. Take your positions. Let's improvise. Oh, stars, give these trailblazers your blessing. In the mood for another order beating. Order the tech the Mara struck. <laughs> Dreams do come true. triggered the cargo's defense program. I don't think trying to shift the blame is a wise choice. But seriously, I don't know why that thing suddenly started moving. I swear on the Amber Lord. Enough. Miss Shikwe, please escort our IPC guest to the Skyfaring Commission. I'm on it. Please follow me, Mr. Scott. Gentlemen, our preliminary inspection shows that there is indeed hidden biological tissues inside. Just like the craftsman feared. I can't even tell if it's ingenium or biological in nature. The core of this device is what they call wetware, in industry slang. To put it simply, this machine operates with a kind of biological nerve as its control center. I'll take some samples for the alchemist to analyze and figure out where the biological tissue comes from. Why would the Intelligentsia Guild use such unethical technology? Perhaps they're trying to create a new weapon? Whatever the reason is, it's probably why the Borison attacked the ship. No wonder the IPC were trying to obstruct our inspection. I'll contact the Ten Lords Commission and ask the judges to come and give their final verdict on this. According to our rules, all prisoners and weapons involving dangerous creatures must be taken to the Shackling Prison for further sentencing. After all, it's the safest place on the Lafu. As for you, Mr. Craftsman, please go with the Cloud Knights and explain the situation to the judge. I had a feeling that the IPC members would cause trouble, but I didn't think they'd be this tricky. Thanks for your help, Miss Lingsha. I should thank you for saving my life. Your sword skills were impressive. Taking down that 
big guy. I thought the General's retainers were all burly martial masters. I didn't expect Yenqing to be so... <laughs> Can't argue with that. As for you, you must be the guests from the Astral Express, right? Saving the Lafu from that crisis. It's so impressive. at the Alchemy Commission. We can discuss your suggestions for revitalizing the Commission. Uh, I'd be happy to accept your invitation. And you three are coming too, right? Nothing to see here. These machines are to be shut down. Keep your distance until then. <laughs> 